Welcome back to the channel guys. We've got kind of a mess on our hands today. I'll kind of explain what's going on. We're gonna do some planting, not the kind of planting I wanna be doing because we gotta replant that pond there. We have about six inches of rain since I planted this and the corn's at like V2. Six inches of rain and the corn's at V2. That means we probably had some issues out here. So um, this whole thing was ponded and I'll put a drone photo in and at one point my tile inlet got clogged somewhere in there which means the pond didn't really drain much so we had to locate the main crack open the main and uh find the main and then run a tile finder down there to crack open the main so this pond will actually drain so we got to fix the main we cracked open down there and then we got to clear a clog on this tile inlet over here so i want to show you guys how important tile is this fall I'm gonna try and tile this the farm. Here's where the main runs through, right here, guys. I wanna show you something. If we look like the 20 foot around the main, we have a pretty good stand. Um, the main is the corn stalks run through. We didn't have flags at the time. There's a pretty good stand right there. Right over top of the main, great stand. If you go uphill a little ways even, the stand is not as good. And that's uphill, that's up slope. If we go downhill even a little more ways on the other side of the main, the stand is not good, it's drowned out. Both sides of the main have a horrible stand. Right over the main, great stand. And this is kind of a low point even. This year has proven very well how important it is to have all your farms tiled where it needs it at least. Um, like it's insane the stand right over this tile line. It's just crazy to see. I think this might be the third time this spring we've ran a mini excavator. But like this, you can rent for like 250 bucks a day. And if you can knock out a couple broken tiles, fix some stuff, Whatever you gotta do, it's not that bad a deal. So all of this right through here is gonna have to be replanted across here. Okay, so we found the tile. Ah, oh, she's full. She's clogged somewhere there. Unless that's the corner where it turns, you know. Yeah. So if we should, should we go dig on the corner where it turns then? Probably. We're, we're making a mess. It's what we do best here. I'm pretty darn sure the block's in the 90, and this is what I first suspected in the 90 degree turn. So we cut on one side of the 90, we're gonna cut on the other side. And uh, I bet you it's right in the corner, right where that, uh, right where that probe is. Should I get it out right there? Or you think? Dig I think. More? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be too suctioned if you don't really get it nice. Here, uh, that worm trying to get there. It's right here. You ready for this? Film this, yeah, you on camera. Yeah. Big old hand of camera. Oh no, feel that, feel that. It's a literally uh, broken tile that's gone in right at that corner. See it? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So then that clogged with corn stalks. Right here is right where it clogged. You can see all the corn stalks in there.
Good. Oh, we're cleaning it up. Ooh, there is a towel right there. Coming in. Okay, so we've got the intake here, and it went to a 90, which ended up actually being a T. And there's a five or six there. inch running that way. That's why that is all wet, is because this was blocked right here. And now that we open it up, it's all flowing down around the shovel and flowing down in there and going down the main now. So we're figuring this system out. We're going to end up retiling the whole thing next year if we have a, a dry fall. But for now, you're figuring out how this whole tile system works and you got to make the decision of there's an eight inch main. Is that eight inch main big enough to tile all these acres into? Because there's another main kind of over there on the other end of the field we could run too. So it's at least good figuring out what's in your field especially since you just bought the field and you have no idea. I do have old tile maps. That run was not in the old tile map though. So it was probably put in later, but it's crazy what people from the 1900s, early 1900s, you know, 1920, 1930, 40, 50 put in for tile. Like they, I think a lot of this, they laid by hand and stuff. And especially that eight inch main, I'm surprised this stuff is still working and still on grade. So that's, uh, it's pretty insane what they've done back in the old days. This is our tile locate, 450 feet right here. There's a copper little wire in there, and we'll send it through, and then play with our locate. We don't. We're just testing it out since we just bought it. Want to see how it works? Hitting in. I hit something. It must be the end. Then we have a red cable connected to the reel, and then flex on the ground. Turn on our transmitter. Let's get close. Peak. There it is. Right here. Right there. Then he hits it. Okay, a couple hours later, we got this all, all the main hole patches done, and then we got this all patched up so it's not the best this wasn't the best idea at all the way these guys did this before whoever did this before because you got a six inch running to what was a four inch line right here basically a four inch line to an eight inch and so six inch to four inch to eight inch probably wasn't the best so we just did six inch six inch t down to four inch adapters that run down there it still runs down a four inch line to the eight inch Okay, a couple days later, we are planting beans on what I call my south farm. So when I originally started farming, I had uh, three farms in this area since I've sold two. And actually yesterday, we agreed upon a price because this farm has actually been for sale for a couple months now and a guy purchased it. But I still have the crop on this for this year until we close on it. So we're doing planting. So I've got my buddy Mark out here um, to help me plant. He's got a 15 inch planter and uh it'll be i've never done 15 inch beans so we're gonna see he made the trip i called him late last night because a different guy was gonna plant it but he's trying to hurry up trying to get done before the rain see with us so um so i called mark in emergency and he's out here planting so oh yeah you said you haven't planted beans in two years with this not two years so we're gonna see he's a corn on corn guy so we're gonna see if this uh we're gonna see if we can get her going we might have some issues first getting started but we got rain coming in like probably eight nine hours so we're rushing what do you think you're looking good yeah, i'm gonna hit the backs and we'll go up start down there okay yeah yeah start down there and we can just see dig and see what happens yeah. So I have a I have a 12 row too, and that's a 12 row, but that is a whole beast of a 12 row planter. That thing's kind of heavy, actually. I forgot my seed digging tool, so I think our screwdriver is what's going to be next. Beans, beans. Oh yeah, we're looking good. Looking good. Everything I'm seeing is looking good. We're at the point now though, 
it's been wet rain 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 and i was gonna try and get these in early april but it just rained rained and rained and uh we're at the point now where we just got to get them in it doesn't have to be perfect just get the beans planted currently racing the rain there's a big thunderstorm and you can see all the rain right there but i think it's gonna miss us it's gonna just go scoot on by right to the northeast of us is what we're hoping because we still have like 70 acres to plant left and there's mark rolling right there and yes we are planting beads on beans here on this like 30 acres the rest is corn on beans It's a mess out here. We got rain. Oh, I thought it was gonna miss us. And I'm trying to get out on this beer right here, which will be fine. There's a little bit of base underneath it. But this sucks, because we're gonna get rain for the next like week or two. Uh, and Mark came all this way, 30 miles to plant this thing. Sucks, but it's all good. It's part of farming. You can see we got the sprayer hooked up. I thought I was gonna be replanting corn and I had the planter all ready to go. All the replant seed ready to go. But for the past like month, it's been raining, raining, raining. Like I had it all set up. So I hooked up to the sprayer because we have some, uh, the corn's at V2, V3, maybe a tad early to spray, but it's been so wet. I mean, it's like 45 days after we planted. Um, and so there's a lot of weed pressure out there, especially on the end rows. So, I gotta get this stuff sprayed. Um, otherwise, end rows are getting terrible um, with weed pressure. So we're gonna get this sprayed. I'm heading over to Mark's place and we're gonna get uh, load up and then go spray this out. Okay, send down the last of realm Q and we should be good to go. I gotta double check everything. Make sure we have enough and everything. We should be good to go. I double checked my math like three times on everything. So <laughs> Okay, we should be good to go. Got about 1050 gallon, 1100 gallon in there. That's perfect for about 79 acres. Got about 77 acres but there's like four or five acres that are ponded out. So I don't even know if I can get the tractor through that. So we'll just probably go around it. So I might be able to go through it. If, we, if I can go through it, we'll just spray through it then. Keep the weed pressure down through there. But uh, it's kind of tough judging the perfect amount when you got some acres that are uh, ponded out. And I hate, I hate running short on this stuff. So I don't want to run short. I'm gonna fire up the pump. And we'll get that agitating. We'll just get that agitated while we drive and we should be good to go. In some spots this corn is good, in some spots it's terrible. I've been cutting through the pond, you can see some of my tracks out there and it, it'll hold you up there. It's just it's just muddy. You'll get mud all over the tractor, but it should be pretty dry. I feel like Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's not optimal at all. We can get through there The worst stuff is right by the tile and like honestly if I would have waited a day or two I could have easily just sprayed my AP lines through there, but just gotta dodge some wet holes 
If the corn was any taller, it'd be kind of tough to get this planter through here. Luckily, I can unfold it. It just goes right down the rows. And so obviously we're not running any, over any corn. And uh, I actually, my, my field entrance has been tore up because I've been in here so many times, it feels like, with the sprayer. And then I sprayed some source. Um, usually I throw that in with like a fungicide, but I sprayed some source yesterday with the sprayer and did a couple strips uh, to actually see what the yield result is of spraying that. Because usually you throw it with fungicide and there's no way to tell if the source actually has any ROI or not. So uh, we threw 40 acres of this 80 acres and sprayed that. So we got strips here. So everything's looking good. Got post sprayed, obviously you guys saw that. And last thing is we just need to top dress this with uh, some urea and AMS here. So most likely tomorrow or in two days we'll top dress it. It's really not too bad. Everything's going pretty smooth. A little tough backing up, but uh, we're doing our, my, dirt, my windows are so dirty you guys can't even see. But uh, yeah, it's working pretty good. It's, it doesn't take too long. It's not too terrible. We're just gonna go until we kinda hit some good corn here. So right there is our buggy. And I used this for some AMS on some beans, so I think I'm pretty familiar with it. Ooh, we may have the right hitch size too. is helping out this corn tremendously. Um, heat and dry weather the past two weeks has been amazing. Our plot, I gotta remember, you guys gotta remind me even though you can't, I cannot spread urea on the back side of the plot because we're doing a trial of high management versus low management basically right here. Okay, here we go. This spreader is actually doing a really nice job. The goal with this is to, at least the old spreader I always used at my other co-op, is to keep the RPMs really low um, and then drive pretty quick, it seems like. But it's doing a nice job, it really is. Like it's not throwing hard to one side and the spreader's doing a nice job. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Got urea coming out. So there's urea and then there's some AMS in here too. This is AMS and the white stuff is urea. I can't believe how well this corn is coming out of all this wetness we've had. I mean, this is corn on corn and with all this heat and we're supposed to get a lot of heat, it is really helping it. It's helping everything dry out and I can't believe how good this corn looks considering the wet conditions we had. It's it's definitely not amazing or perfect at all. It went from horrible crap shoot to poor. So it's it's coming through. I'm I'm surprised how well how better it's looking now. We are rolling. We're spreading. It takes a little bit of getting used to a smaller implement because usually you're used to swing super wide for a 90 foot sprayer and this is 50 foot so it's like you gotta turn and whip around quick and go back on the other row so I've been off a couple of times and it always just makes you mad when you're off a couple of rows and stuff and you gotta cut over some corn. Okay we are done spreading and what's kind of nice is all you gotta do is go a mile to the co-op right there and drop it off. currently backlogged on video so over the next week or two there will be like one or two uh, videos coming out I'm trying to get edited one of them if you guys watch Spencer's YouTube channel he already showed it I bought a, uh, a new tractor a John Deere 4020 um, which was kind of unexpected but I ended up buying it so um, anyways be on the lookout for more videos thanks for watching guys